Chapter 3 of Joe yeah. Lau's Critical Thinking basically talks about definitions and definitions are very important in explaining meanings. Definitions have two parts. They are the defendum and the defense. So defendum is the, is the term being defined. So we have an example. Spouse, which is a married person. So a married person here is the defendum. And then defense. Defense are the words that, that define the defendum. So a married person here is the defendant. And then we also have some subtopics under the definitions. We have concepts and the concept is related with a term in an idea that outlines our understanding of the term. Example, sensia is a Latin word distinct from the English word science. And then we also have reported definition. Reported definition is also known as lexical definition and it reports the existing meaning of a term. Example, echoas which has its meaning as economic community of West African states. And then we have stipulated definition. A stipulated definition is used to assign a new meaning to a term, whether or not the term has an existing meaning. Then we have precising definition. Precising definition is to make the meaning of a term more precise. Then we have some definition techniques. And these definition te techniques are ways of formulating a definition. These are Okay, we come to chapter 4 of Jolao's critical thinking. It talks about necessary and sufficient conditions. Necessary and sufficient conditions to the layman means adequate requirements that must be met. Necessary conditions here is to say that the occurrence of one event is required for the occurrence of another. Example, Going to law school is a requirement for being a lawyer. A single situation can have more than one necessary condition. Sufficient conditions say that the occurrence of one event guarantees the occurrence of another. Okay, so an event can either be both sufficient and necessary. Necessary and sufficient. Necessary but not sufficient. Sufficient but not necessary or neither ne necessary or sufficient. Necessary and sufficient ca conditions can be applied in definitions. Example, taking the definition of a student. A student is a person who attends school, who attends a school or a university. This is both adequate and sufficient. Another definition for a student is someone who studies, but this definition is only adequate but not sufficient. Right of fallacy. Necessary and sufficient conditions are very important, but sometimes used in bad, very bad arguments. Example, a person cannot impact society if the person did not go to school. Exclusive and exhaustive possibilities. Exhaustive possibilities is a set of possibilities that does not leave out any situation. Example, a person being in his bedroom has the possibility that the person is sleeping. Exclusive possibilities. This is a set of possibilities that one event occurring excludes the truth of the other. Example, he's a law student, so he cannot be in pharmacology class. I'm here, I'm here to talk about chapter 5 of Julao's Introduction to Critical Thinking, and that's about linguistic pitfalls. So, linguistic pitfalls are wrongful use of language that hinders effective and accurate communication. Languages which have no meaning or are ambiguous or unclear are linguistic pitfalls. So, let's look at some linguistic pitfalls. We have unclear meaning. This is when languages are not precise, vague or incomplete. They are unclear for understanding. They should also be organized properly so that people understand well. Ambiguity. These are statements with different meanings. We have lexical ambiguity, which is when one word has more than one meaning. For example, the word fall. It can be waterfall or downfall. Names of places can also be ambiguous. Referential ambiguity. This is when the statement does not really say what the pronoun or quantifier is. For example, a woman beat up her daughter because she was drunk. Here, we don't know who was drunk. Syntactic ambiguity when expression can be interpreted in many ways 
we can rewrite sentences to make them make meaning or list of different interpretations sounds can also be ambiguous evocation this occurs when a key term changes meaning when a key term changes meaning in the middle of an argument vagueness is also another type of linguistic pitfall and this is when an expression which is not precise can be rectified in an order for example five mango trees and two coconut trees fell during the storm it can also it will also be written as a few mango trees and coconut trees fell during the storm but it should be written as a few trees fell during the storm incomplete meaning there is no sense in judging whether two things are similar or different unless we show how they should be compared we also have distortions quoting out of context category mistake empty meaning and gobbly dig gook everywhere that is when an extreme form of linguistic pitfall this is an extreme form of linguistic pitfall where simple ideas are made complicated and expressions are dressed up as the truth Um, I'm talking about chapter 7 of Jolo's uh, book, which has to do with basic logic. Logic is very essential in our daily lives and logic plays a special role on computers or in te technology because computers use logic to process data into information, useful information. So we have certain basic concepts of logic which I would like us to discuss about. The first one is consistency. For example, when you say Kwesi is happy, that's a statement. And you again say, Kwesi is married. Definitely, a married man should be happy, isn't it? Yeah. That's what consistency is all about. But when you say, Kwesi is 30, and you, you again say, Kwesi is 20, maybe you're talking of age, what that means is that it is inconsistent because the same Kwesi cannot be 30 and 20 at the same time. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So inconsistent statements are known as Contraries, <coughs> contraries, right? And when you say there are round squares, round and square, it, it's not possible. Something cannot be round and at the same time it will be a square again, right? We have what we call entailment. I want to talk of entailment. Let me cite this example. Let's say P and Q. Make, P makes a statement. Bomb exploded in UK. Then Q makes another statement. Something exploded in UK, right? We will say that Q is logical consequence because it could be that someone else's egg has exploded in a microwave or someone's car tire burst. Because the mere hearing of a sound does not mean that. So in, in conclusion, there are two important points about installment, which has to do with, the first point is that a set of true statements cannot have false consequences. And then a set of false statements can have a true consequences. Let me explain that. For example, when you say a bomb exploded in UK and another person says something exploded in UK, it could be that it will either be the bomb exactly or it will be otherwise. You're getting it, right? 